Hello everybody, today is August 3rd here with Chad back here and Emily right here. Today is your Tuesday update, so let's just jump right into it. If you don't know, we as a family grow these monstrosities, not my wife, the pumpkins. We, uh, yeah, this is one of our hobbies. When I say it's our hobby, it's really my hobby and Emily just tolerates it. First thing we want to do today while I have my helper with me is we're going to show you how to estimate the weight on your pumpkin. So what did this estimate at, sweetheart? 700 and change. Uh, however, to get the estimate, you have to measure it. So you measure it by putting the tape measure around the circumference. And Where once you the... Get these you can get these tape measures at... Uh, at Hobby Lobby because you need the long ones when the pumpkins get this big it's difficult to do it by yourself so you have to get your beautiful helper out so you gotta do your measurement like that having two people helps you get it around because you need it at the widest part so you'll take the widest part and that's you know maxing out the tape measure right there so we're gonna call that 144 inches and that's pretty close to the widest part No, we're gonna tell them it's bigger than what it is. Yes, 151, like Emily said. Uh, then you do from front to back. So you stick the tape measure over the front. So you have to put it right to ground level. On the ground, yeah. So you don't you don't wrap it around your pumpkin. You don't put it like on the board. You don't move your sand. Basically, where it is, uh, the bottom of it. So you do that. And Emily will give us some sort of arbitrary number. 88. 88 inches. And then you do the same thing side to side on the widest part. And you put it down to where it's the bottom is. And on the widest part. Try not to forget these numbers. Yeah, then you don't forget the numbers. And what's that? 94. So what are we all three? I have no idea. 141, 94. What was that one? I don't 80, remember. 80, 88. <laughs> so then you'll add all those up. So we're going to say that Bring that a pencil was. And a piece of paper. Or the app on your phone when you're not making a video. There's an app on your phone if you search, uh, I think it's only Android, but if you search the GPC weight estimating tool, uh, it will. You can make an Apple app. Get on that GPC. Android's better. Um, she uses Apple. Uh, so then it'll spit out the estimation. So this one's 700 and change. It adds all three of those numbers together. And then you compare that to the uh, current GPC chart and it tells you what it should weigh. You always want it to go heavy, uh, not light. So yeah, this one, I realized I haven't slapped a pumpkin this year. Somebody, yeah, dude, somebody. Slapping his pumpkin. Yeah, it's, uh, I think the, the Growing Giants guys were we're having some fun with me on that. Yeah, I haven't slapped my pumpkins. Making up for it. That one thumps light to me. That doesn't that doesn't feel good. What do you think? Give it a slap. It's very pretty. It is very pretty. And the pumpkin too. I just need a couple slaps. Just a couple. So what are we gonna name this one? Max is in bed. We need to name these. I don't know, you can't do that on the spot. Okay, well, next week we'll have names. Let's go, let's go check. What'd you name that one? Beanbag? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Emily's named the 2118 Beanbag. Let's go check out Beanbag. Yeah, before we go check out Beanbag, I've been whacking away at this plant back here. Emily's gonna go make sure her son's still in bed. Uh, I haven't, I literally haven't looked at this since last week. When I did the video, as you can see with the vines growing over it. Oh god, it's still just as ugly as it was last week. But, I mean, it's still growing. That's probably, oh, hasn't exploded. That's probably 200 pounds. Probably 200 pounds, so. Yeah, tooth went heavier than what it should have been. So I've taken off almost half the plant. Watch the video that I posted earlier today when I was taking this plant out uh, on why you should bury your vines and why that is super important. The plant on the uh, 
Tiger King plant is really good. The leaves are looking pretty good. I mean, a little aged, as they should be, but, you know, they're not crinkly and delicate, and they're not just totally burnt out like some of these other leaves are. Like these ones, a little more, uh, a little more mileage on them. Speaking of the growing giants, guys, where, uh, where, where's your videos been, Jacob? You haven't seen a video from you in a while. Mix posting a bunch of videos. Uh, Josiah and Mike, Mark Clements, uh, who else? Frank, the Northeast guy who doesn't use any words in his videos. I think it's pretty darn cool. Doc something or other. There's a lot of pumpkin videos this year. Some really good uh, footage out there. Lots of canolage being uh, bestowed on people who want to grow giant pumpkins. Uh, I had a question today on, actually this week, Tim, local guy. Tim was asking about insecticides and whatnot. Here in Colorado, we have um, we don't have squash vine borers, thankfully, but we do have cucumber beetles and uh, and uh, oh my gosh, there's the stink bugs. The heck do you call them? I don't know. They're not squash vine borers that lay the maggot. They're just the uh, the cu not the cucumber beetle. It's the one that drills the hole in the plant. Anyway, those are our worst enemy out here. The best way to kill those is a systemic. Um, you know, imiprid, I believe is how it's called, merit. Um, I use granule merit in here to keep the aphids away. Uh, because I'm in a greenhouse, knock on wood, I haven't had any of the, uh, the squash bugs, that's what they're called, uh, any of the squash bugs in here in the last two years, knock on wood. Um, but I do get aphids, so I throw down a granule merit to keep the aphids at bay. Um, that's the best thing, best thing. but Tim and other people don't like that because it's systemic it goes into the flowers and then if the bees try to pollinate that you'll kill the bees so that's not ideal um your only other option really is contact something like seven because i don't have any flowers open that i can show you the contact poison will go on the outside of the plant look at that tomato bush right in there holy crap you can tell i haven't walked through there in a while that's like a six or eight foot tomato bush um yeah, so anyway, the uh, the flowers will only get that poison on the outside. And when it opens up, there's no poison on the inside. If the bees cruise around the outside of the flower, then they'll get it. But uh, you don't have a lot of options past systemic, unfortunately. So anyway, this here guy, these two are about the same. I don't have the days uh, next to me. I want to say they're under 40 days, and these are both over 600 pounds. Uh, so that one's over 700. These two are over 600, and they're like five pounds apart. They're one day apart in pollination, and uh, they're looking pretty good. This is the one Emily named Beanbag because it's got a big old bud on it. You could probably sit in there. This is the one that had the stem problems, the short stem issue. Short stem is still there, but as far as the placement of it goes, I mean, that's it's probably about the best I can ask for with... Uh, with everything that is has, with everything that this pumpkin has going on and going for it and with it, it's growing the right direction to hopefully not pick itself, not pop it off. Um, yeah, it's doing doing what it can. Another question that I had this week was fertilizer. What fertilizers am I using at this period of time? Um, I'm using the same things I've used all year, but in different proportions. So, like, I use my 12, 12, 12. I've been using that like every five days or so i'll give everything a shot of 12 12 12 that keeps the plant nice and happy and look at the plant on this guy 2005 haste this plant is perfect knock on wood down there you know along the main vine showing a little age but those uh, those leaves are still giving something so i don't need to chop them off but everything else nice dark beautiful lush a lot of plant behind the fruit looking pretty good um uh, 12, 12, 12, every five, no, that one's every seven days or so. I use a little bit of Neptune's Harvest. Um, that goes on pretty much every day. Some humic, 0, 0, 25, that's every five days. And then cow mags about every five days. Uh, so that's really all I use. Um, I'll use, I still do some biologics, Neptune's just about every time. That's about it. Nothing, nothing too special. No secrets. A little silica every once in a while. 2005 this pumpkin's looking great it's got a really good shape 
This one we scooted back. This one could use another scoot back, but I don't know how the heck I would do it unless I connected like a come along and <sighs> attached it to some of the strap to some of the pillars back there. That'd be about the only way I could do it. So that'd be a real pain in the you know what. Next year, I think I'm going to go Moby Mike style and deadhead these and just try and grow them at the end of the plant. That would be awesome to not have to worry about all this crap or this crap as much. Uh, so I scooted this one back and I can probably stand to scoot it back again because it's growing forward and I'm putting a little bit of a kink right there. So as this pumpkin still continues to grow, which this one, get my, get my slap in, this one sounds heavier and hopefully it will still grow. And if it's at 600, hopefully, you know, we double it. That's going to be a lot more of a strong kink right there because it's going to grow in every direction this way included which would put a harder kink there which you don't want because you know if you're uh, using your garden hose and you kink it you ain't going to get as much juice no water coming out the end it's the same thing with these vines if you kink your vines you're constricting your flow of uh, water and nutrients to your pumpkin so that's about it for this week it's been an interesting week we got a lot of a lot of weather it's been hot and then rainy and humid so Weather's all over the place, but knock on wood, still fairly consistent in here. I think that's all I got for you guys. I don't want to get it too long-winded. Check out those other uh, growers, YouTube channels. Like I said, a lot of good information this year. And uh, that's all I got for you. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Ask your questions below. I'll get to them. Send me an email. Join your local club. It's patch tour time. Check your local club. We're doing patch tours here in Colorado. Our patch tour is not next week, but next week when I'm out of town. So in two weeks, I will be out of town for almost two weeks. Very concerned about that. Emily will have to hold down the fort. She is perfectly capable. That's all I got for you. Thanks for watching, everybody. We will see you next week. Get out there, grow yourself a beanbag.